What is going on everybody and welcome to part 30 of Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. In today's part we're going to be initializing the barricade entity so we can actually see it and spawn it within the game. So for this we're going to be working in just our init.lua file only and to begin we're going to create two functions here. The first one being function ent colon initialize and this will take in no arguments. And then the second one being the function ent colon spawn function. And this will take in three arguments. A player entity, which we'll call PLY. A trace, which we'll call TR. And then the class name for the entity that we want to spawn. And then we will also end that one off. So let's go ahead and start with our initialize function here. We want to set four values here. The first one being self colon set model will just be set to the model variable that's stored in the share.lua. And we can grab that just by doing self.model. Next, we want the self colon physics in it. And this will be solid underscore v physics. Next up, the move type. So self colon set move type. And this will be move type underscore v physics. And the fourth value we want to set is self colon set solid. And we want to set this to the same exact thing as physics in it. So solid underscore v physics. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and get a physics object and store that in a variable. And we'll do this and we'll call it local phys equals self colon get physics object. And now with this physics object, what we can do is to check if is valid. So if this physics object is valid, then we want to go ahead and wake it up. So phys colon wake. And that right there is all that we need for the initialize function. Next up, we'll do the spawn function here. And the first thing we want to check is to see if exclamation point tr dot hit. So if this trace does not hit anything, then all we want to do is just return. So if a player is not looking at something, then all it'll do is just return, completely negate whatever is below this. So if any other code down here, it'll completely be negated if the player is not looking at something. If they are looking at something, all the code below it in this function will be executed. And the code that we want to be executed here is local spawn pause. And this is the same exact thing as ammo dispenser. So PLY colon git shoot pause plus the forward vector, so PLY colon git forward times 80. And after that, we want to go ahead and set the owner for this entity. And this will be self.owner. And that'll just go ahead, grab the owner variable from within that share.lua, and we're going to set that equal to PLY, or that player entity that ends up spawning the barricade. Next up, we actually want to go about creating this entity, so local ent equals ents dot create the class name. And that's just the argument that's passed in up here. That's just the class name of this barricade entity. And with that, we want to do ent colon set pause, and we're going to set the position to the spawn position. Then ent colon spawn. And then lastly, ent colon activate with that. And then we want to return the ent itself. So with it, that is all the code that we need. And if we go into game now, once we get into game here, we can go into the Q menu, into entities, and then barricade. And as you can see, it'll spawn directly in front of us, and we can move it around as we please. And we can keep spawning them all day long. Unlike with the ammo dispensers where we are limited to only three, the barricade is not limited to anything at all. So as long as we have the money, we can go ahead and keep spawning these things all day long. So that right there is going to conclude part 30 of Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.